What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Naeem here. We are continuing the John Boat conversion process. Today it's all about installing the bilge pump. The boat is almost done guys. I'm super excited about that. One key thing I have to have in this boat is a bilge pump. So we're gonna go ahead and get that installed today guys. If you've missed any of this build or if you're new to the channel and don't know what's going on, I'm doing a full John Boat to bass boat conversion, converting this guy right here to a bass boat. So if you haven't seen the build up to now, stop right here. Click that link at the top of the screen, get caught up, and I'll see you back here right now. So here's the pump I'm putting in, guys. This is by Maxone. This is an 1100 gallon per hour pump, guys. So this one pump will do this entire boat. Pretty excited about that. Pretty strong pump. I wanted to make sure I had something that in case of an emergency or whatever could happen, it will pump it out really quick. And then I also got this kit here just to make life a little bit easier. This is by C-Sense. In this kit, you have your clamps right there in case you need them, some steel clamps. You've got your rubber tubing and you've also got a through hull fitting, guys, if you need that for your boat. I won't need it for in this case, but that's also included. Make sure, guys, if you get this bilge pump right here, make sure you get this one that has 1 8 inch fittings on it okay don't worry guys as always i'll leave a link in the description for all the products used all right guys so first thing to do is pick a good location you want your bilge pump at its lowest point in the boat that you can get it in this case uh, right off the back transom i've got a flat surface here might be a little bit tricky for me because right here i have where the boat plug goes and that'll be in there and I actually don't like this boat plug. I actually want one with a smaller handle to it so I can tuck it away a little bit better. But anyhow, the idea is to get this pump somewhere down here. I probably have to turn it this way, but I'll figure all that out. Um, the hose will come out this way up over the transom and dump out the boat. So first things first, I need to find a way to secure the pump to the boat. I don't want to drill down in the bottom of the hull. I'm not doing that. So what I'm thinking to do right now is I uh, use some aluminum and try to find a way to secure it. I just realized I might need this spot. So install it right here. What I'm going to try to do is fabricate something using aluminum sheeting and find a way to get this bilge pump securely put down here. Um, so probably attach the base of this to a sheet of aluminum, bend it and secure it to the rear of the hull. I just realized this is in the way. Uh, in a previous video, I had to move these from here over to here, but I'll probably have to move this to get that done. I'm just gonna remove the bottom of the pump. So we've got three holes right here, and this is where I will rivet into the aluminum using these three points. I'm gonna try not to cover these vents right here that allows the water to turn the pump on. I'll go ahead and trace out some aluminum and probably do it about right here. And that should be enough just to hold this in place. Oh, I just did that wrong. All right, guys, guess what? Just realized I made a mistake. This needs to be over here because this is the side of the transom, duh. If I cut it right here, I don't have any uh, sheet to attach it to the transom with. Mistake number one, I'm gonna retrace it over here. Just to play it safe, I'm gonna cut about 10 inches of this. The grip side of the rivet will be inside of the build pump. So I'm gonna switch over to 1 8 rivets and the grip on this, which is this piece right here, is a quarter of an inch. And this does fit in here pretty well. As you guys can see, a little bit of space, but I think that's okay. The main thing is that this side of the rivet will block the hole and not just slip out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill this out, get, the, get this installed on this, and then start to figure out how to bend this into shape for the bolt. All right guys, did a couple of things off camera. One, I moved this up. Originally it was down there, but that's in the way of the bilge pump. Uh, if you guys remember from a previous video, I had to remove the signage that came with the boat 
They were originally over here, but because of the framing of the rear deck, I had to move them. So I think this is a final resting place. This is supposed to be visible at all times for the Coast Guard or DNR or whoever needs to see what your boat capacity is. Another cool fact for today, guys, is I did a lot of research because I have some areas I need to touch up. So I did a lot of research trying to figure out what touch up paint works best for this boat. How do I get an exact match? I have areas like this where I had to use that same silicone 50, 5200. Oh, by the way, guys, this is excellent silicone. Anyone in the boat world has heard of this. It's really permanent and solid stuff. The best stuff out there if you're trying to fix your hull, if you have any leaks or anything like that. The one downfall is, and you'll see it in reviews, once you open this bad boy up, you really need to use it one time because it will even get solid to where you can't open this up and try to use it later. I found a way to do it, but I literally had to drill a hole into that into the tube to get more out so i have these areas i need to touch up i found one gallon touch up paint for like 50 bucks that's an exact match to the factory specs but then i came across this this is by rust-oleum it's camouflage paint it works pretty good i actually did a little test right here you can see the green right there on the cardboard and it's a pretty close match to the green of the boat i did a couple spots in the boat already because i had to move this and I spray painted it here. It's not an exact match by far. I am not claiming if you have a low boat that this is the ultimate solution, but this is a really good fix, especially if you just have little areas you wanna to touch up that you're not too, you know, you're not too worried about whether it's an exact match or not. Actually, the color is army green, so it's not dead grass green, but if you look at if you look at the lid, it's pretty close to what the boat is. Anyhow, we're gonna move on from that. Next steps for the bilge pump is to get it installed in the boat. And let me show you what I did. This is what I have done with it. This is how I'm gonna install it in the boat. I riveted in a very thin aluminum. This is 0 0.019 thickness aluminum. Just cut out a piece that matches kind of the base of the bilge pump. And how this is gonna work is, again, it's riveted and I'm gonna bend it into shape so that it fits, so that it fits properly and holds the bilge pump up against the rear transom. All right, this is how I'm gonna install it, guys. I wanna make sure that it's flush, so I'm just gonna push down on it, and I'm gonna bend it a little bit so that it puts some more pressure on keeping it up against the flooring of the boat so that it really doesn't move around. And I'm gonna drop some rivets, probably three rivets right here just to make sure it doesn't move. And that's it. All right, bilge pump is in pretty good. It doesn't move around much, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Next, I wanna go over the wiring. Most bilge pumps come with three wires. It all depends on the model you have. Of course, you have a ground wire, but then you'll have one or two wires for power. This particular model has two power cables. So how this works is one will be constant power. Constant power for me will go to the directly to the switch panel. I will have the ability to control it manually whether I want the bilge pump on or off. The second wire will activate the automatic feature in this pump. The pump will automatically turn on once the sensor inside the pump senses that water is in the boat. That's what this connection is for. So you have one that if you connect it to a battery right now, it'll turn on. I'll actually demo that for you. This battery right here. This is actually the trolling motor because I know a lot of guys have asked about this. This is the battery I use for my Pelican Bass Raider Fish Finder. Just a simple little 12 volt battery I picked up from Bass Pro Shop and we're gonna use this. I've been using this to test my LED lights and we're gonna use it to test the bilge pump also. And you just have to read the manual on your pump to see which one does what. But in this case, the wire that has no strip on it, the solid brown wire, will receive power straight to the pump and activate the pump right away. And this is what I'll put on the switch panel. So if I touch the power, we should hear the bilge pump turn on. And it did. And for this wire, this will provide power to the bilge pump that if and when water is detected by the pump itself, it'll automatically pump it out without me actually having to do it manually. With that being said, power going to this will not do anything. All right, so I just connect it to the battery. And if I want, I can't turn it upside down to make the little float switch happen, but there is a little test. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a test knob back here. If I turn it, it should turn on. There you go. And this is a good way. It's a good way to test a, a feature back there that I can use to test that my bilge pump, the automatic pump feature is working. So you're not just, you know, doing your thing and then next thing you know, you're taking on water and your pump doesn't even turn on. There's a way to test it whenever you want. 
by flipping that. What that does is when I turn the knob, it lifts up the sensor in it as if water was making it lift up and that's what makes it come on. Hopefully you guys followed me, it's pretty simple. What I'll do next is go ahead and run the negative wire and to do that I have a negative bus bar. So here's the other bus that's back here. I already have stuff connected to it like LED lights. Um, so I'm just going to tap into that for, for all negative leads. That'll limit all of the craziness that can go on to your battery, connecting a lot of things to your terminal. So to avoid that, I have a small four stud bus bar right back here. I really don't have a good angle for this shot, but you guys get the idea. Connect it to the bus bar, keeps it nice and clean. All right, so we already know we need one of these, which will be this one will go to the switch panel. I've already run the wire through the conduit over here and I have a power cable already that's for the bilge pump that's right here. So all I need to do is connect these two together. Of course, hide the wire as best as I can underneath the framing, which I'll do that. But I'm gonna do the harder part, which is not that hard, which is to get this fused because we need a fuse on this. That one will have a fuse naturally through the control panel and the fuse box up front. This one, I bought an inline fuse. Uh, this is all 14 gauge. So I'll install an inline fuse for this. I got this off of Amazon. I don't remember who the vendor is, but as always, I'll leave it in the description below. We'll go ahead and prep this, get the inline fuse set up on this. What I'll probably end up doing is running this wire directly to the battery. I really don't have any other power back here that's not already tapped up. So I just wanted to show you guys really quick the solder and connectors that I'm using. This is not the brand I originally started with. Even though the ones that I did use worked great, these work even better. It's by a really strange name. I don't know what, how to say that, Hestronica or something. This is a pack for a 14 gauge wire and like 90% of the wires in this boat are 14 gauge. So buying a pack of this works out really well. And what I like about this one better than the other one I was using, even though it, it works fine, this one feels a lot more solid. So after you melt it down and get it all nice and secure, it doesn't curve the wire, meaning the actual connector doesn't crimp and get all curvy. Just a little tidbit guys i'll leave this link below both of them work but this one works a little bit better it's a lot more sturdy and the connection i think ultimately will last longer all right guys so this is coming along i've got the power cable connected up to the inline fuse and i just need to put a tip on it so i've got this tip that is a 14 gauge ring terminal. It goes on to a 5 16 terminal, fits perfectly on there just like that. So guys, I'm actually out of shrink tubing. So I'm gonna go ahead and use liquid tape instead, especially since it's back in the rear of the boat where the motor is. This stuff can be pretty messy. Hi right, guys, while my liquid tape is drying in the back, I'm up front just making the con connections for the bilge pump to the switch panel. All right guys, we are done with the back of the boat. The bilge pump is in, everything is wired up and I've secured all of the wires and connected to the battery. Everything has power. I haven't tried it out yet. I'm gonna test it out in a minute, but just wanted to go over some of the wire management I did. I figured I'd just do it while I'm back here. So as you can see, between wire looms and wire ties, I was able to just clean this stuff up a bit. This is what it looks like right now. Everything looks very clean and neat, guys. Also wanna give a shout out to one of our subs, Sean. Shout out to Sean. He gave me the suggestion to shave off the edges. That way this is more rounded and I don't like cut myself reaching into a hatch. So thanks, Sean. Shout out to you, man. It was a great idea and I did it right away. So I was able to clean up these sharp edges on these supports right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. So Sean's probably shaving me a trip to the emergency room or something, you know, that's, that's time off the water. We don't want that. Last but not least, guys, we gotta get the hose hooked up. I almost forgot about that. All 
All right, guys, anxiously awaiting the test as all tests. Let's do it real time. Well, of course, we got power. That's funny, it reminded me of what happened in the last video. <laughs> anyway, watch that video, guys, for the real time uncut turning on of the power and lighting up the LEDs for the first time. All right, so we got power. This is for the bilge pump. Let's give it a go. There we go. You guys can hear it. And I got the GoPro set up on the other camera so you can see it. So that's excellent. I've got manual power to the bilge pump. We can actually turn this off now to do the rear test. To test it out back here, we just use the automatic switch here. There we go. So that's connected to the power to the main battery. That will have constant power, giving power to the automatic switch built into the bilge pump. That will trigger it to automatically pump water out the boat. All right, so last but not least, we'll go ahead and clamp this down. I have some two hole clamps over here. And as you can see, they are black. And when I bought them, they're gray. I just painted them black. Got these from Lowe's, pretty inexpensive. I'm going with these tech screws. I've showed them in other parts of the build, but these are self drilling screws. And what I did with this was just paint them black and everything everything just blends together a lot nicer and hides the screws. All right, this worked out really well, guys. It is extremely secure. This thing is not moving at all. This thing is not going anywhere. And what I did to secure the pipe, coming over to the other side, I have a zip tie right here. I drilled through the other side right here to secure the wire tie. Just put two holes in the aluminum and zip tied the, the tube onto the aluminum. So that really helped to keep it in place. Build pump is done, guys. Super excited, guys. The John boat is almost done. I'm on deck and you probably can see some of it behind me. That video is coming to you soon. I'm anticipating this boat will be done in about two weeks, guys. Get this bad boy in the water. Appreciate you watching. Link below to the full conversion for this John boat in the description below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave us a thumbs up if you got something out of this video. As always, be safe out there, guys. Catch you on the next video.